In addition to being the mayor of the city of Santa Ana, you're a mechanical engineer. As someone who is interested in renewable energy and clean technology solutions, you understand the science behind new solutions better than most city administrators. You've been involved in facilitating the adoption of many different types of renewable energy solutions from natural, natural gas, solar PV, cogeneration and fuel cell applications, gas and electric vehicles, hydrogen powered internal combustion engines, and uh, converting waste energy into fuel, to name a few. So what do you think are some of the most revolutionary new technologies on the horizon, and how will they change the world as we know it today? I believe, you know, the internet, the megabytes are clashing with the megawatts. And the way we're able to control things from an energy standpoint is just changing everything. For example, storage. You can't generate electricity, really, and not have a demand for it unless you have storage. So if you have storage, the demand can occur at different times. And so that is going to change the way we generate, distribute, consume uh, electricity. So that's one area. And, you know, storage, and storage can be you know, commercial, industrial, even residential. I think it's not too far away where we're going to have batteries at home along with solar systems. And when, and when the sun's not shining, you have your backup. And, and, and those systems, by the way, are already being in, in, in installed in many applications. I, I just think it's going to become a, you know, a very, very large penetration across the market. Um, as it relates to transportation, energy playing and again, you know, computers and smart technology playing a role there. You know, the cars we drive now are more and more and more efficient, more effective. You know, for years I worked with uh, South Coast APMD Technology Committee, mm -hmm. helping develop you know plug-in uh, hybrids and and ultimately the electric cars that we now see. We we're just doing it you know over ten years ago, where we were breaking codes and adding you know 7.5 kilowatt hours of capacity on the back of a of a Prius that we are modifying ourselves and getting 75 miles per gallon and 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 and, and really changing paradigms. Now, of course, you know, we see wonderful companies like, like Tesla that I think are going to completely revolutionize the market. You know, when, when, when you look at the internal combustion engine, we've been at that for about 100 years and we've got it down pretty good. And I even, you know, we've worked on projects putting hydrogen inside of an internal combustion engine. And that is a pathway. But I think the better pathway is, is just the whole, you know, electric, uh, you know, system, you know, the drivetrain the motor and the motor really is an electric motor but now we're finding well you know we can fuel it or power it now with fuel cells after many 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 years fuel cells are finally coming down we're going to start seeing them in cars and by the way those cars are going to you know start to drive themselves there's you know you're going to you know put in your google maps you're going to put the, the address and you're going to check out profound changes profound. you know you'll be able to be you know on the cell phone or doing your homework if you're a student or whatever it's going to be a different world that world is right around the corner and it's a better world what we have to do is do everything we can to preserve the planet you know global warming is real you know we can argue all we want but all i have to do is look at the parts per million of co2 molecules you know in a given unit of air and you'll see that they're that they're up, and 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 so we need to continue to to assist the planet, to use energy that we use more responsibly, and to understand all the connections. You know, one of those connections is water, water and energy, water and society, water and transportation, water, water is everywhere. And right now that we're having this drought, you know, here in California. I think it's it's a, a, an opportunity for us to figure out well you know how do we use water and do we use it to the best of our ability and what options do we have one statistic I like to give people mm -hmm. is the fact that one pound of beef takes 2,400 gallons of water to bring into existence so you would have to not shower for six months in order to save 2,400 gallons. Wow. I, I don't suggest you do that, but right. on occasion, I mean, I'm a vegetarian for 39 years. On occasion, maybe you don't eat that pound of beef. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, that you have the consciousness as to what it means for the planet. 
because everything we do has ramifications. Sometimes we're not aware of those. You know, all the plastic we produce. There's an island out in the Pacific mm -hmm. Ocean somewhere bigger than the state of Texas, I understand. Uh, you know, that's, that's wrong. We, we have to figure out how to heal the planet. And whether it's coming out of City Hall and there's a piece of paper by the trash can that somebody didn't pick up, pick it up, put it in the trash. But, 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 but everything you do, you know, try to do it in a conscious manner. And, and as an elected official, you know, try to, you know, bring in good policies, try to fast forward technologies, and trying to assist from a public policy standpoint you know, having those technologies come into reality and being used on a, on a mass scale. So that leads into another question I have for you. So what recommendations do you have for the marketplace as to what the challenges are that cities face now and what types of renewable energy or clean technology solutions cities are needing now and, and how can they... Well, for, first of all, I think even though we've been at energy conservation for a long time, I mean, here in California with Title 24, if you look at our buildings on a square foot, you know, uh, you know, basis per year, we use about 50% less than buildings in other parts of the country. So, you know, we, we build them with, with efficiency in mind. But, but, but conservation, there's still a lot of waste. There, there, there's still a lot of light bulbs that are not LEDs. You know, there's still, you know, HVAC systems, heating, venting, air conditioning mm -hmm. systems that, you know, don't get, have good thermostats that are, that are maybe old or antiquated. And, you know, you're heating air and you're cooling air and then you're mixing it to get the temperature you want. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, variable speed drives. There's, you know, digital thermostats. There's, there, there's, you know, heat pumps. There's different ways of balancing loads and buildings. You know, conservation and, 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 and smart design a huge, huge long way to go. We also have to change our way of thinking about certain things. For example, I mentioned water earlier. You know, traditionally water is something when it rains, we just try to get rid of it. We would not let you come to City Hall and, and, and build anything if you didn't have a good plan as to how you're going to get rid of the water. Right. And, you know, you have to have the drainage and you have to have the runoff and you, we just want it in the gutter and we want it off the property. Now, thank God, we're saying, keep it on the property. Let it go into the aquifer. You know, you know, French drains or, or, or storage areas when, you know, the little rain that we get, let's treasure it. Let's save it. Let's not make it go away into the ocean. Let's try to put it into the aquifer. So, so, so conservation, you know, how do we save along with smart design, along with good policies from cities? You know, they're all, they're all imperative. You know, in, in terms of technologies, we're going to see more building integrated solar where the skins of buildings are going to have, you know, solar cells. You won't even be able to, to, to distinguish them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't really have enough wind in this, you know, part of California, but we do in others. And there, part of what we need is, you know, how do we generate electricity in one area and get it to another area? So, you know, we, we, we still need the regional solution as we go in a, in a distributed manner. We still need certain regional things but you know in wind things are getting very very inexpensive in solar photovoltaics i remember you know you know they used to be you know 20 30 dollars a watt and then it was in the teens then it was under 10 and then there was a magic number of will it ever reach a dollar a watt well now it's below a dollar a watt and 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 now you know inverters are becoming smart and that's important because now you can maximize the interaction between the user and the generator and, and the utility. And, and, and again, this is technology. I mentioned the internet earlier and the megawatts and the megabytes. Well, you know, you know smart uh, uh, you know, chips that, that are able to get us all to communicate, that is, that, is, that is huge. What about the drought in California? And how severe of a problem is that really for us? And what do you think the implications uh, near term and long term are for California? Well, near term, uh, you know, we have to look at tiered rates. You know, in the past we've had the more you use, the more you pay in order to try to encourage certain, you know, conservation. Now the Supreme Court has said can't have tiered rates. Uh, I think on Monday we got that decision and now coming at the time with the drought, it's going to be really, really difficult because what we're probably going to have to do is just 
increase the overall base in order to make up for the the tiered rate system going so that's going to be one thing but the other is you know the governor is asking us to reduce you know from 20 to 35 percent depending on what the communities are some less some more mm -hmm. but but you know, in general we have to squeeze and and as we squeeze though you know the question is going to come back as to you know cities use about 10 percent of the water in the state uh, you know, farming is about 80%. Mm -hmm. So, so, but then, you know, how do you squeeze farmers? Because then they can't grow things. And do you want, you know, trees dying and, you know, vines and crops and, you know, we mm -hmm. feed so much of, of not only California, but, you know, much of the country and beyond. That's so, right. so a lot of tough areas. One of the answers I think is going to be desalination. But the question there is going to be, is it reverse osmosis or other technologies? And at what cost? You know, you know, we've gotten used to cheap water forever. It just fell out of the sky and we would use it. Now, you know, we're talking, whereas before we were at $600 an acre foot, now it's at 1000 or $2,000 an acre foot. And it's going to reflect in everything. You know, the, the price of food's going to go up. You know, the, 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 the you know, golf courses, uh, you know, parks, um, you know, a lot of issues are going to have to be debated. Do we, do we put in, you know, turf, you know, versus natural grass? Um, you know, do we plant more native, uh, you know, plants native to California, but native to California with normal rainfall? You know, what happens when you used to have 13, uh, you know, inches a year, and now you're at six inches or less? What's native now? You know, uh, again, a lot of, lot of tough issues, tough decisions. Uh, fortunately, we have the bond that was passed, but money alone isn't, you know, going to do it all. I think we also have to be more aware, more conscious about all of our decisions and how we use water. And, and, and I think we're going to have an index before too long as to how much water does a blank take. And I, I, earlier I mentioned a pound of beef. Well, how much does an almond or a pound of almonds? You know, how much a pound of avocados? Everything takes water. You know, we as people, how much water does it take? Do we take to, to live and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and to do everything? And, and I think as we become more conscious, we'll, we'll you know, become, I believe, more responsible consumers and, and that will help as well. But uh, look, this is gonna be an ongoing thing. We're probably not gonna be able to leave this issue for the rest of our lives. I don't think it'll go back to normal. I mean, Caltech is already saying maybe it's a 25 or a 30 year uh, you know, drought that we're looking. Fortunately, there's other people that are saying we may have El Nino next year. And look, one thing I do know is we still have the jet stream. And whenever it comes south, we get rain. So I'm not saying we'll ever be able to influence the right. jet stream, but um, you know, hopefully we will have a wet year at some point and that'll help. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do everything else that, 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 that I mentioned yeah. earlier. Okay, well thank you so much. Uh, Miguel Polito will be speaking at Coney Bear Clean Tech's inaugural event on May 14th. So ho hopefully you'll be able to join us then and hear even more. Thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you. Take care.